So apparently Denzel Washington recently came under fire while promoting his new film, Roman J. Uh, Israel Esquire. In the interview, Denzel Washington basically states that black fathers or black fatherless communities are basically what leads to criminality and criminal behaviors. Do you think we've made any headway? In the I think it's more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. For whatever reason, media outlets like the Huffington Post wrote attack pieces that basically uh, were not based in any fact. They tried to debunk what he was saying. Um, I have right here that says that uh, <clears throat> Denzel Washington is dead wrong about the bad black father. And it, and it goes into uh, stating that poverty is the, the leading cause of criminality in, in the black uh, community, which is something that I debunked in my last video. But poverty is not the leading cause of, of, uh, of criminality or criminal behavior because we can see criminal behavior in some middle class uh, black communities. We can see uh, criminality coming more so from uh, single parent homes or fatherless homes to be exact. So because uh, criminal behaviors are usually um, seen in males, it, it goes to, without, it goes, uh, it kind of goes without saying that males will have more problems if they don't have a father to kind of guide them. So the Huffington Post in talking about poverty fails to think about certain things. They, they, they're not really, <laughs> they're trying to launch a counterattack that isn't counter to what Denzel actually said. So, so they're basically saying that he's saying that, that uh, it's because of bad black fathers. And I don't think that's what he said. I think he said that black fathers not being there for their kids and this this article that the 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 huffington post is basically showing is that um black fathers even if they're not in the home tend to be more involved in their child's life and if you listen to denzel washington when he's giving this interview you'll hear him specifically say that his father and mother were not together so obviously his father was not in the home but his father was a part of his life he was saying that these other kids that he grew up with who had who grew up to have more problems and criminal uh behaviors than he did as he was trying he was getting off that path and going to a, a better path um choosing a better path i should say he was saying that he had his father in his life, even if his father did not live there. I, I did talk about my three closest friends, and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together. But I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example, yeah. and they didn't. And I guess that whoever wrote this article um, in the Huffington Post must not have caught that part, Earl Hutchinson. Uh, he must not have caught that part because most of his article is about, uh, is, is trying to show that black fathers uh, stay, are much more involved in their, in their kid's life if they're separated from the mother or don't live with the mother. And that may be true, but that doesn't uh, take away from Denzel case you know what I mean because uh, one of the things I often say is I have people who would tell me well I, you know I, I was poor and both my my mother and father were in the house and still all these things were going on in the community and 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 within my household there may have been some criminal behaviors that my brother or somebody did um, despite the fact that our both parents were still there and my my Question to them is, well, what did the rest of the neighborhood look like? And they'll say, well, most of them didn't have fathers. I say, okay, well, you're you're still growing up in a community that has a social norm of a of a single parent home, and this is the problem. So the so because the the, the dual uh, parent home is not the norm in some of these communities, it's still those the norms and the values of the the community as a whole kind of take over 
especially when when kids go out and in, into the community they may leave a house that has both parents in this community that is mostly a uh, single parent so that that has a huge impact so this is this goes into where i say that um <clears throat> What we do has an impact on everybody around us. Our choices impact everyone. It says something about people conveniently leaving out the word some, those, or the offenders before black fathers. So what he's basically trying to say is that Denzel's not saying, he. it sounds like he's saying all black people. And I think this is... A ridiculous argument I think most people in their right minds know that when somebody says something about a group they don't mean all of the people in that group uh, it, it sh sort of should go without saying I think this is, a, is a, a weak argument and something that somebody shouldn't bring up when they're arguing these things if somebody said most or some or however many it's not a very strong argument okay I think what what I would like to ask um, is that why when we're critical of black folks, do we have to be attacked? You know, I think the uh, the thing here with this attack on Denzel and on anybody else who's dared to go against, uh, to basically anyone who, who brings up personal responsibility in, in regards to black folks gets attacked. You know, some kind of lashing, um, tongue lashing or somebody writing something uh, people do not like to hear the argument of responsibility and I think that, that that's that's problematic because I think you know we look at um, generations prior to us to our generation if you hear and talk to speak to people from that those errors those previous generations they will talk talk all about how the community would would come down on people who were doing the wrong thing. You know, the, sh uh, the, the tactic of shame was, was well and good back in those days. I mean, criticism, uh, tough love was embraced. And, and you hear it when people are kind of nostalgic about the old times where you could go outside and, and if you were a kid playing out, outside, somebody else's parents caught you doing something, you get a spanking from somebody else's parent, not even your own. The whole community would hear about what you had done, and the whole community would basically shame you for doing something wrong. Not shame, shame the person for who caught the kid doing something wrong and who, you know, the, today it's, it's like the whole reverse. We had this like stop snitching, and, and if a kid's out there doing something, you're not supposed to say anything. Uh, there's this whole idea that, that black folks are not supposed to be critical of one another in, in public, especially people like Denzel Washington, who have so many viewers and so many white and black fans or people from all uh, colors and ethnicities love Denzel Washington. So if he speaks out about uh, black problems, black issues and makes black people look bad, um, then he's to be hushed in silence because... You know, we don't want to we don't want black people to look any any worse. Well, how come we aren't critical of the people actually doing the crimes? Why, why aren't we coming down like this on on the black criminal or the, the 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 rapper who who promotes these negative images, the negative images that seem to be what people don't want. If it's if it's seriously discussed, people don't want to hear it. You know, if if, if it's celebrated then people are fine with it if we celebrate the, the the negative portions of our culture it's fine we can have tv shows like uh hip-hop what is it love and hip-hop or all these type of shows where you know there's violence on the shows there are people berating each other they're having kids out of wedlock they're, they're they can't seem to have good good relationships the relationships are always all over the place that stuff is just fine and you don't see a whole bunch of people coming down on them unless they're part of some kind of organization and then the organization will try and shut down the shut down the show y'all know who i'm talking about if these things are not are not cool for us to, to talk about um or or be critical of then it just leads people to just be able to do stuff and and, and they they know nobody's going to say anything to them it's like when there's no consequences for those actions 
then what? The only the time we have consequences is when people are critical of those people who really need the consequences. So we're going to have put con all these consequences on people for speaking out, um, being critical of criminal behaviors or behaviors that lead to criminal activity. Yet the criminals themselves, we're supposed to make all kinds of excuses for them. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's 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 it 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 flies in the face of logic. It just it's not sensible. It's not reasonable. Uh, we need to do better in that regard. I think criticism should be a foundational part of our community structure you know and and, and should be embraced and, and and listened to i mean and not and not attacked like you know the author of this piece in the huffington post was just attacking if there's something that he said that's not true then that's fine and and he seems to try and make that case here that he thinks it's some of these things but he obviously is uh, straw manning. Well, he's he's doing giving a straw man argument. He's he's talking about that that Denzel Washington was calling black fathers bad, and I don't get that. You know, it takes two to be in these relationships that don't work. Sometimes it's it's the woman who wants to leave. So to try and make it seem like Denzel is is on the father. And not and not saying that this is just a, a a problem in general, and not blame put it, placing blame on a particular parent. Uh, I think it's it's more so the culture that he is is being critical of, and, and and there is a culture of of having children out of wedlock, and and that's that's uh, a problem. A lot of the concepts and things that I will speak about in my videos will be repeated ad nauseum. And the reason for that is because hearing things over and over again is how we come to believe something. It's how we uh, latch on to ideas. The left is able to win by repeating things over and over again to us to make it so that we actually believe these things, even if they're not true. So th th how do they do this is because they control the media, they control entertainment. They control the education systems, you know, the universities. So by having that sort of control, the things that they say are, are drummed into people's heads over and over and over again, and people believe it. But unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is not, it's not true, and it's, it's meant to uh, harp in on your emotions, and it's more of an emotional, they're, they're catering to your emotions rather than of giving you the facts and I, I always say somebody who's willing to to twist the facts is not really your friend if they're not telling you the truth you know if I go out with my friend to uh, a restaurant or to to a club or to a, some kind of outing and I have you know something on my face food on my face or something like that and my friend doesn't tell me that I have food on my face is that that a good friend who would allow me to go out in public to try and in a place where I'm trying to present myself a certain way and they didn't tell me that I had something on my face. That's just, it's kind of the same thing. Like, if uh, a government or, or, or media or whoever else is willing to tell you, oh, you're, you're not at fault, you're, you're good, you're okay, fucking up and everything and you're still okay, uh, it's somebody else's fault. They're not telling you the truth. They're, they're, they're basically, they don't care about you. They just, they want you to feel good about yourself. They want to make it seem like they're good. And it, usually this is because they said they can gather votes and everything else. It's really what it all boils down to. There's a book called Smear. I've mentioned it before, but it talks about how politicians and the media work together to set, um, set something in the public's mind so that the, the, the public can gravitate towards a certain political party so that for votes. So, I mean, these things are happening. There's lots of evidence that it's happening. It's just unfortunate that some of us aren't recognizing that it's happening, but, but you're being uh, bought off. These ideas are being planted in your head for a reason. They want you to be a victim for a reason because victimhood allows them to come in like the hero and, and get your vote, even though they're not really doing anything. But anyway, single-parent homes or fatherless homes are are a, a huge problem and probably 
one of the, the I would say probably the number one predictor of criminal uh, behavior um, and outcomes that lead to criminality in, in, in children. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read a couple of these things here. Children who grew up without a father are five times more likely to commit a crime and five times more likely to live in poverty. They are nine times more likely to drop out of high school and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. 20 times more likely to end up in prison. Um, <clears throat> it says, even when controlling for varying levels of household incomes, children from fatherless homes are more likely to end up in jail. That's key, especially when you're talking about what this gentleman was talking about in the Huffington Post. He was trying to blame all this stuff on poverty. The other thing is that it's a lot more likely that you live in poverty if you if you come from a single parent home. Um, of married black families, only 8% of married black families live in poverty. That's single digits, folks. Not a lot of... Uh, married black families live in poverty so we know this i mean there's 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 the three rules that i've mentioned before to to stay out of poverty those are graduate high school um do not have children until you are married and over 21 and get a full-time job another thing is that kids who never had a father in their home who never knew their father uh, are are most likely to end up behind bars. These are the most likely people to end up behind bars. Fatherless homes are are more important than anything like poverty. And if, uh, again, a fatherless home can be the reason for poverty. Dual parent homes are going to be the best way to keep kids out of poverty and out of and, and out of um, the criminal system, justice system. All right, so uh, and something else that, that Denzel mentions in this video is a kid. He mentions this kid by the name of Yummy. I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up, Google little yummy. Mm. Lil Yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the headshot of him, and he's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now, and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Yeah. It starts in the house. It starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. An 11-year-old kid, which I th which is what really made me want to make this video because I've had an interest in, um, you know, what kind of brought me to all of this is, is seeing, uh, my peers gunned down and shot, shot and killed for, for stupid reasons. And, um, this 11 year old kid was out here in Chicago, uh, and he was, he was he was killed at 11 years old not before having taken it seems to what had been be the case that he took someone's life a young girl a 14 year old girl uh a little while before he was gunned down himself he was on the run from the police uh after after the shooting of the the 14 year old girl two brothers are the ones who found him before the police did asked him to get into a car asked him to uh, get out of the car at this underpass and they shot him in the back of the head dead. All of this because they were all in, involved in gangs now. Uh, this yummy kid, his name was uh, Robert Sandifier, it's his real name, but he went by yummy in the community. Um, he was involved in gangs as well and apparently when he shot this 14 year old it was a, a gang hit that he had been ordered to do and I guess the gang after he this kid after he did the shooting he made the cover of time magazine uh, and uh you know so it's a, a big story 11 year old kid, kid shoots a 14 year old girl of course it's going to be a big story national news this is in the 90s and um you know i guess the gang members probably saw that he was getting all this 
uh, attention and they felt like if, if he did get caught by the police that they would probably be in a lot of trouble so they probably decided to uh, extinguish this, this child's life um, so that he couldn't talk to anybody or say anything. It, it's a sad story and, and but there are lots of them like that. Um, another one from from several years ago is Darian Albert and I, I'd, li I'd like to kind of dig into these kind of cases myself and kind of figure out some little more information this this I just got this information today because I, I heard Denzel Washington talking about it um, I just feel like uh, Denzel Washington had had a, a point and uh, he apparently is doing some research on his own if he can if he knows about this kid and he's willing to mention him uh, on, on, in, on national television as he's promoting this film I think uh, I think that we are wrong to be so uh, harsh at his criticisms. I think I think that he should be critical. I think that that when when we are critical of one another and we hold ourselves up to a, a higher standard, that we were better off. We need to hold each other to a higher standard. Uh, we need to consider that. Uh, you know, some of the the cultural ideas that we hold hold uh in high esteem and high regard are not good cultural values and and we need to we need to be okay with that we need to be okay with saying that maybe our cultural values are not as good maybe there are others that we could we could uh implement or or ex do an exchange for and uh this whole uh, cultural appropriation stuff is ridiculous uh, that's how we we've, we've gotten to where we are america's gotten to where it is by everybody sharing cultural aspects um the positive the best the best cultural traits rise to the top hopefully and the ones that aren't good go to the bottom and we don't we don't use those things and hopefully we get rid of them but what we have to be um comfortable enough with is saying that okay these cultural values that we hold are not are not good ones so just consider that folks like i say consider culture my name is Chi Brown, the cultural craftsman. Um, subscribe, hit the subscribe button below. Um, like the videos, leave comments. I know I'm still new. Uh, I hope to gain your viewership in the near future. It's always a pleasure.